Hello, good afternoon. Let's get started. So let's have a look of the lab, then we can have a look of the final exam content. So we just spend around 10 minutes for the lab nine because it's pretty easy. I will show you how to generate it. And then we can have a look of the final exam information. Okay. And yeah, here we go. So for the lab nine, it's about the gesture detection by using the channel state information. So the channel state information are usually from the Wi-Fi. So just imagine use your mobile phone or your Wi-Fi router to detect your gesture in your home. And we have a paper in here. So to get the idea, just re-look at this, uh, this paper. Or well, you can also go to the YDAS 3.0. Uh, I think we already had a check of it last week. The YDAS 3.0, they have some demonstration on the website. So you can have a look. That's how they perform the gesture. So we have two different tasks. The first one is to generate the CSI uh, data file. So all we need to do is just follow the steps. So first one is using the MATLAB. You need to download the correct version. Otherwise, you may have some error uh, when you're trying to use in the script. Uh, another option is to use MATLAB online to generate it. Let me see if I can get it. Uh, just give me a sec. I'm using Relab to open it. Yeah, and the lab marks has been released. You can have a check via the submission link. Uh, the lab two to lab four and lab five should should be already released in the Moodle. And lab six and lab five may have some issues. We are handling the issues right now. So you may not be able to check the results for lab five and lab six right now but should be available by Wednesday. And the marks for lab, lab seven will be also available by tomorrow. Okay, let me open the math lab right now and see. Can you see my screen? Here is the I I use my relab to open the MATLAB online. So it's online version of MATLAB. Uh, you don't need to install anything. So it's pretty convenient. So just use your ZID to log in this website. It's free. And I have already put my file in here. Uh, you can download the file by yourself by click this link. So you just click it and then, and then, uh, sorry, let me show up. Uh, yeah, just download the file, then you will see the script 
in here, you will have this folder as well as the gesture data in here, black screen and swipe. The, these are two binary files. So you just need to using the script to transform the DAT file into .mat file. So just imagine uh, we have some binary file. We need to read it and convert it into some like mat, MATLAB array format. So we can use it to plot some information from the binary file. So how to do it? Uh, maybe first is the how to upload it. So once you download it, you need to upload folders if you are using the online version. So just upload folders and choose the whole folder and then upload. Click the upload, then you should be able to upload it. So do not try to drag the like drag the folder into here, it will not work. So you have to right click it and then upload it. So remember this one is the first step. Uh you need to upload folders. And once you upload it, uh it will be like this. It should be in gray colors. Should be in this color. So which means you did not add it into the path. So if you try to run the script, it will not work. So you need to add to path, right? So you just go back, go back to the root folder and right click and then add to path, select them all, and then it will be in the color in the dark. And then you come to this script, that to CSI math. So basically this script is just transforming the binary file into .mat file. And then you just change the file name accordingly. If you want to transform the black screen, you do the black screen, otherwise you do the um, swipe, swipe, and next string, and then you can run the file. And it, it will generate some information in here. Uh, some issues here so maybe i copy this one copy the next string uh, maybe copy the tab yeah copy copy path next string and run it Okay, so you can see we successfully run it and you can see some like generated file. So you just right click and then we will have a option to download it. Uh, so you just choose a single one, right click, download the file, right? And right click, download the file. So this is the online version. It's easier to use. So don't worry about the version problem. And then now we are almost complete the task one right now. So this is the task one. Just use the script to transform the data. And you can also play around with it because in this toolbox, we do have a lot of different scripts. For example, in here, we can get a Doppler and get the Doppler spectrogram. You can try to play with them. It's kind of interesting. So in the future, when you are trying to uh, play around with this kind of data set, if you are doing some research, this will be very helpful for you to understand how to run their data set and their toolbox on MATLAB. But in here, we just uh, stop in here. You can play around with the toolbox by yourself. And now we come to the task two. 
In the task two, we are going to run some Python scripts to generate these two kind of uh, visualization. So you can see this amplitude and the phase. Mm. What we need to do is just basically copy the code in here. I already put it in my Jupyter notebook. Please give me a second, let me run it. Mm. Sorry, where is it? So just open this one. So I already put some code in here. It will generate the this is space, this is amplitude. So they have some gesture inside. Uh, maybe you can change the index in here because I didn't show them all as it's pretty large. So just show part of it. And if we look at the code, then you can see uh, we have some stop carrier parameters in here, which is 10. So I'm trying to put first 10 step carrier thread. Like this is the base and this is the amplitude of the sub carrier zero. And this is the sub carrier one. So we can see just choose some useful information here. But they are quite similar. So choose one that you can think that that you think which is like most recognizable for the gesture. For example, in here, we, we might think this could be a gesture. And this may be the start of the gesture. And if it's not moving, probably it's a silence area. So when they do the data collection, they are trying to perform the gesture for two seconds and then wait for another two seconds. And then they perform some gesture again. Does it make sense? So maybe we make it to, to 3,000, will be more clear. So it's not showing out here. Ah, that's the reason. So let's wait for a bit and see what's the outcome. Uh, it's pretty slow, but I'll just leave this for you to play around with. Uh, try to recognize if there are any like gesture inside. So very obviously, like from zero to 500 is one gesture and around 900 to uh, 1,300 should be another gesture. So you can just have a check of it and include this one into your report. And another important thing in here is about the X axis. As you can see here, it's from zero to 250, and then 2000. So this is not the time, it's the packet. So there are 2000 packets going on the graph. So we need to transform them into time. As you can see in the report, uh, in the specification, the X axis is the time. So we need to transform this one. So this is a package size. 
Uh, so I just make a note here. How do we transform it? So it's one set equal to 200 packets or X. So try to transform the time, transform the packet to time. Okay, so just divide by 200. So in, in this graph, we have 10 seconds. And you can also have a screenshot of this uh, code and try to run it by yourself. Uh, but you still need to do some modification. For example, you need to add a title for the X and Y axis. And just try to have some output like we have in the specification. Is that okay? Yes. Uh, so in my generated graph, the first one is the face. And the second one is amplitude. So in here. So, and let's go back to here about the submission. So in your submission, we need to write a PDF report at first. You just need to include the graph in here, the, the first one, the second one. You need to do both the swipe and uh, leg swing. So we have two different gestures, right? We need to generate both of them. So you should have four different figures in your report. That's the first task. And the second task is your observation. So what is your ob observation here? We mentioned in the subcarrier. Please observe how many subcarriers do we have in the CSI data. Uh, if you go back to have a look at the code, then you can see we are using the CSI stuff to generate the plot, right? Just need to know how many subcarrier. You can try it by uh, like replacing the subcarrier with a very large number to guess the maximum number. Or you can also have a check of, of the shape of the CSI. Uh, so I just put it here, the shape of CSI. So you should have around 270 subcarriers, I guess, but you need to validate the number inside by using, uh, like for example, you're using 270 to generate the plot, see if you can get it and try 271. If you cannot get it, then the maximum value of the subcarrier should be 270. So that's the report. And we do find some issues for the zip file because the math files could be very large. So for this part, uh, try to com com like, try to submit this part, but if you fail to do it because the Moodle have some limitation on the submission, uh, it must be below 100 megabytes. So if you cannot do it in here, just mention this one in your report and you will have no penalty. So that's the submission. Uh, don't worry about the zip file if it's too large, just have a screenshot in your report and we'll have no penalty. Yes, and can you repeat the subcarriers number? Was so for the sub carrier numbers, uh, we have a script like this, right? We have a script like this. We just need to generate the amplitude and the phase of it. Let me just just copy the, this one. You can see we can set the sub carrier. So now we want to figure out what is the what is the max number, maximum subcarrier number that we have? So you can just basically try 
different values and figure out what is the max, maximum value of it, right? I'm not pretty sure about it right now. You can have a try of it by yourself, but could be 270 in my perspective. Uh, so uh, the, this one is not complete yet. Uh, so it, it cannot be run. Yeah, if I delete it, no, I can't delete it. Yeah, I'll just have something like this and run. And if it can run, then it's, it's all good. And it can try to run to 80 and should have a raise out of bound, right? With size 270. So, so the number should be around 270. Just validate this one by yourself. Validate this one. So that's the lab A, lab 9. Just let me know if you have any issue with it. Otherwise, we go to the final exam information. Uh, so we have a, uh, I, I have a GitHub link in here, including some tweets from last year. I put send it in the chat. I also upload the uh, slides in here. We can have a look. It's about the final exam, and we can go through it right now. This is the final exam information. So maybe firstly, let me know what do you want to know about the final exam so I can have a look and focusing more on that part. It's one minute and let me know. Okay, okay, so some questions, right? You want to know what exactly will be tested in the final exam. So uh, in this part, maybe we should talk about this stuff, like exam information and important knowledge points. So you know like what will be covered for the final exam and how to prepare and some sample questions. So I got some real questions from previous years. So uh, you can have a try, give you a shot and see how it goes by yourself. So let's go to the first one. Uh, we have a slide in Moodle, if you can have a look. So I attached the link in, in the slides already. Uh, basically, the time is on 7th of December, it's Thursday. Uh, and it shows this 9.45 p.m., but I think it's an error on the slides because according to the to the slides provided by our professor, it says 9 p.m., but probably it's a.m. So just validate this one by yourself. And I will also have a check and announce it on the ad forum. So make sure you attend the exam in the correct time. But I think it's AM right now, and I will let you know. And you can also check this one uh, like by using the UNSW website. I think there are some time table in your end. And it's an online exam. So online exam will be tested in the inspira.com. Uh, so this server is in Europe and it may have some delay 
you give some patient when you load in the question. But luckily, we only have 15 different questions and uh, will not take lots of time to load the uh, information from the exam. But if you ha have any like internet issues, just let us know during the exam. And it will have two hours and 15 minutes, 15 minutes reading time. Hence, you will have around 10 minutes for each question. 10 minutes for each question. And majority will be essay type question and a few multiple choice questions. Like what we have in the quiz. The next part is how to do the preparation for the exam because we have plenty of time to do the preparation. I uh, still have around like three weeks, more than three, three weeks. You can, uh, firstly, I reckon the most important thing is the lecture slides. So go to have a check of all the lecture slides. Uh, you don't need to memorize everything because it's online and open book. So you can search online by yourself, but you cannot communicate with anything, any other person. Uh, just so in the lecture slides, I think you need to focus on the calculation examples because most of the calculation will just quite similar as we have in the slides, but the uh, the value inside could be different. So you need to know how to do the calculation exactly. If you can understand the equation on the theory pretty well and perform the calculation very quick, then you should have sufficient time to do the exam. It, otherwise, if you are, I just know where it is, but have no idea how to do the calculation and you need to have a look of the equation and learn it again, the time will not be sufficient. In my point of view, just do the do a lot of calculation and be familiar with each area, then you should be able to get high marks. And the second thing is the weekly quizzes. We already attend eight different quizzes, right? Every week. So uh, have a try of it again we will have like it's especially for the question you didn't get a correct answer try it again and try to memorize it the next thing is the textbook uh, if you hadn't haven't had a look of the textbook um, maybe you want to have a look of it right now because the textbook is very important uh, if you had a look of the textbook then you will find uh, actually, we had a lot of quiz, like weekly quiz questions are basically from the textbook. And the textbook contain a lot of di different questions as well. And the textbook will be very important information. Mm, and you can have a look at the textbook by cl click the Moodle link. This this textbook is already available in the Moodle. You just need to go to the Moodle and open this textbook in here and, and you can go to the catalog contents here. You can see like one, two, three, four. We have 13 different stuff or 14 different stuff inside, uh, but it's not covered like some part of it it's not covered in the exam. So you may need to have a check of this one. Uh, of this one, imagine like what will be covered. This part will be covered. You just bring this one into the textbook. So basically the chapter one, you don't need to worry about uh, delete it. And two, three, four, five, six, and two, 12. Uh, I don't think we will, this will be tested. So this will not be tested. Will not be tested. And all the other, and the 14 will not be tested. And you just need to have a check of the other content. Uh, just imagine we have 
around 10 different chapters and we will have 15 different questions, right? So you, you are expecting we will have at least three to five questions for Wi-Fi. So you may want to spend more time on the Wi-Fi. At first, we have at least three different questions for Wi-Fi and maybe two for cellular networks. And for the IoT, we may have four, right? So try to go to the textbook and can find some like questions in here, multiple choice tests. Try to understand them all and understand like the calculation behind the questions. That will be very helpful. Okay, so we go back to here. After you go through the lecture slides, weekly quiz, and the textbook, you should be able to get at least distinction in the final exam. So it will be very, uh, like it's, it will be sufficient for a high distinction if you get it well in the assignment and the lab and your quiz. And if you want to make sure you Get, you can get a high score. Maybe you want to also have a check of the lecture video. So if you figure, if you like, uh, you can just sim just have a check or review the lecture video by yourself. And you can see like how many times are the lecturer distributed in each area, especially for the calculation. If we spend lots of time on that area, probably we, We'll test that stuff. So if you have time, have a look of the video again. And I will also provide you some sample questions below. It's from uh, the previous year exam. And you can also search this kind of information by yourself. Okay. Basically, practice, 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 and practice. You just practice a lot and you will be fine in the final exam. And here are some sample questions from last year's. I'm not going to go through them one by one because uh, I just want to leave it to yourself. Uh, just go, maybe have a check of the lecture slides at first, make sure, make sure you already know some content and then have a look of the sample questions in here and try to figure out what's the like correct answer if you get it wrong, then you can like have a double check of that that chapter again. And I leave you around twelve different questions in here. And we do have more questions. I will upload it into my GitHub link. And yeah, so you can have a try of it by yourself after you are ready. And the summary. So spend your time wisely during the preparation, do more calculation than the theory because open, open book exam. So just try to understand the calculation should be enough. And the practice is like more helpful because we are going to do some calculation, right? So try to write down something instead of keep watching and answer all the questions because there is no penalty for the wrong question during the exam. So for the multiple choice, just choose a random question, a uh, random answer. If you have no idea, you will lose nothing. And for the uh, essay question, you just try to type something relevant. If you still have no idea how to answer it, just search in the lecture slides, search the relevant contents. If you have some equation, put it over there. And if you have some like, the concepts also put it over there and try to analyze it to show your understanding and efforts. You could be able to get partial marks. And if you have any trouble uh, with the concepts uh, or some uh, correct answer from the uh, quiz question, you can post it on the ad forum and we will try our best to help you. Yes, uh, we'll 
there be a link for the exam on Moodle? Yes, we will put a link maybe this week or next week. Then you will be able to find a link in, on the Moodle and click the link, you will jump to another website and you can attend the final exam. And that's all I have for today. Just briefly doing the recap for the final exam. Uh, and we do have a, another video from our lecture about the recap. So you will, may also want to have a check of it in the video recording. And this recording will also be available in the YouTube link. And the slides will be available in the GitHub link. I will already send it into the chat. And the last thing is about the my experience. We only have six students doing the my experience, have, have done the my experience. So please give us a favorite and try to finish it. As your like feedback is very important for us. And as a return, I will try to find more like real question from the previous year final exam and put it into my GitHub link. Yeah, and that's it. And this is the final lab session we have. And I wish you have a good luck with the final exam and wish you in enjoy the course. And just let us know if you uh, need any clarification. And yeah, that's it. Yeah, see you. Oh, it's probably the last session. So I'm not going to show you up next week. And I'm going to stop the recording.